So good morning or good afternoon to everyone. My name is Zhang Xiaohang, and today I will be presenting to you my project Women and COVID-19, a gender-based solution to improve the governance of health and social recovery during and after the pandemic. So we all know that in 2020, the COVID-19 has had a huge impact on human society in the global scope, whether developed or developing countries, cities or villages, mainstream or marginal communities, we're all facing a life-threatening pandemic. And this pandemic not only endangers our health, but it also has a destructive impact on the social level, for example, the gender issues. And at the same time, because of social and cultural constraint, it is often very difficult for women to participate in public affairs. And therefore, during the pandemic, women's access to health facilities food, information, rescue and medical resources, and as well as participation in the prevention and decision making of the COVID-19 are very limited. So women are more vulnerable during this crisis. So we selected three project sites in the world, namely China and Asia, Kenya and Africa, and France and Europe. And specifically, our project will be carried out for the women from the ethnic groups who live in mountainous areas of the Eastern Himalayas and Yunnan, which is a province in China, and urban women who live in informal settlements in Kenya and Chinese women from the Chinese community of Paris in France. So these three groups represent three kinds of very vulnerable communities because we are representing indigenous and local communities, poor urban communities in developing countries and minorities and immigrant communities in large cities and developed countries. So the main aim of our project is to address the challenges and crisis brought by the COVID-19 to women worldwide and to provide a gender-based solution for the global health and environmental governance understanding and identifying the economic, social, and moral impact of the COVID-19 on those women is very important. We are going to be developing a gender-based solution to improve the social recovery during and after the pandemic crisis. And this project will also establish the forum Women and Earth Future in order to cope with the current COVID-19, but as well as long-term global challenges such as climate change and biodiversity loss. Our project will make women's voices heard, put forward women's solutions and actions plans, as well as women's knowledge, strength and wisdom and help contribute to society. So our specific objectives are first to identify the key impacts of COVID-19 to ethnic minorities of women in the Eastern Himalayas of Yunnan in China, understanding the woman's knowledge for traditional use of medical plants, encouraging women to discover the role of spiritual belief in the process of public psychological counseling to deal with and prevent diseases, to promote mainstream and traditional medicine knowledge and culture. We will also be identifying the key impacts of COVID-19 on urban women who live in informal settlement areas of Kenya and understanding the gender inequality and the dissimulation of the public health information and services, encouraging women to set up a community-based aid medical organization and networks to participate in disease and public health policy making and decision making processes to improve livelihood security and to reduce poverty caused by the COVID-19. So lastly, we will also be identifying the key impacts of COVID-19 on the Chinese women from the Chinese communities of Paris and France, understanding the social and moral impact of racial and gender discrimination, encouraging women to participate in public affairs and the development and advocacy of approaching publicity channels and social recovery to strive for the equity and justice of human rights and against racial and gender discrimination. So the relevance and methodology of the solution provided is gender-based social recovery plan, GBSRP, 
So GBSRP is an approach that enables women, women's group, and institutions to participate in identifying and addressing COVID-19 related local issues. It is led by local women to empower local women for coping with the COVID-19 crisis. And in this system, local priorities, knowledge, needs, and capacities are key factors for making a social recovery plan. So in these three project sites, the project will formulate three GBSRP models. First, the gender mainstream model. So this model focuses on the knowledge of traditional cultures related to disease treatment and healthcare and a gender participate model. So this model will be focusing on the processes of policy making and decision making for the dissemination of the public health information and services and to improve the livelihood, security, and to reduce poverty caused by the COVID-19 in general. And last is the gender advocacy model. So this model will focus on the equity and justice of human rights and against racial and gender discrimination in the context of COVID-19. So we believe that in addition to the current COVID-19 crisis, women are also facing threats and challenges for um, global crisis, such as the climate change and the biodiversity loss. So in the next five years, the main priority of our project is to continue to carry out various gender-based action projects in our three project areas, including the response to COVID-19, of course, but also to adapt and to bring some changes to climate change and protect our biodiversity. So at the same time, the project will set up the forum Women and Earth Future, in which the three themes are women and COVID-19, women and climate change, and women and biodiversity will be set up based on our project, practice, and achievements. So we invite women from the project sites, as well as women from other regions, stakeholders, partners, founders, and medias to participate in our forum. So through the above mentioned gender-based action plans uh, at the community level and advocacy activities of different stakeholders and the international level, the project will make women voices heard, show women's views and questions and propose women's solution to the global governance because we truly believe that women can have a huge impact on society. So here at the Paris Peace Forum, we would like to get your support and to show that women are the agent force to improve the governance of health and social recovery. The, uh, the gender-based solutions can lead the way in the field of climate change, biodiversity, and beyond the pandemic. So we would like to get the future support of Paris Peace Forum and let's work together to make our planet Earth great again. Thank you for everyone's attention. Um, so does anyone have any questions? So given how different your three different pilot locations were, what are the lessons we learned from the possible difference in responses? So I believe um, that these three uh, project sites are of course located in different places of the world. And these three groups, especially the women in these groups, face very different situation, but at the same time, they have a lot of similarities. So for example, for the women who live in ethnic um, groups and mountainous areas, um, the problem is that um, it's in their culture to educate men and little boys more than women. And so we, what we want to do is to help these women to be more aware of what is happening in the world. They have their own religion and their own knowledge, which is truly very interesting. And we want to preserve their knowledge and to respect their traditions. But we also want to show them a more scientific approach. 
Um, so the problem with the women from these areas isn't as much financial, but the problem is more about the education they receive. Whereas the women who live in inset uh, informal settlements areas in uh, Kenya, the main issue is their economic state and the fact that they're under a lot of um, a constant uh, oppression from the society because women there are view, are, aren't viewed as equals as men. And whereas for women in um, the Chinese community of Paris, the main problem is that a lot of them don't speak French here and they have a lot of issues integrating into the society. And also they're under a lot of racial discrimination and sexism on a daily basis. Uh, I personally live in Paris and um, I was born and raised here, but I also face racism on a daily basis. So I understand that it's still a big problem nowadays. So the way we're going to help these three different groups is very different because they're facing different problems. But what we want to do is to strive for the equity of both genders and so that women can finally have the same access to financial resources and medical resources as men do. Um, so have you conducted surveys, special studies to understand the challenges faced by these women? So yes, I have personally been to um, all of the project sites. So uh, as I said, I live in Paris and I have conducted many surveys on women who live in the Chinese community of Paris. It's kind of like Chinatown in New York. And these women have reported to me that the main issue they have is with racism, discrimination, and the fact that they're having a lot of trouble learning French. So I know that um, in France, there are a lot of um, like associations that help immigrant communities uh, learn French and adapt better. But I believe that the problem is that these women are very scared to reach out. And a lot of them um, who got the COVID-19, they did, weren't even aware of it because of the language barrier. They don't have access to information like we do. And they also don't know how to do basic things like call a doctor or some things like that. And for women of the ethnical groups, um, I shouldn't say that, but this is one of my favorite project sites. Uh, because their culture and their way of thinking is very different from us, but it's very, very interesting. They have their own religion that I've never heard of before, and they believe that uh, the COVID-19 and all of the biodiversity loss and climate change problems are due to their God being angry. And I believe that having their own religion is very admirable, but sometimes we also have to talk about the scientific impact and the scientific reasons behind it so that we can solve the problems. And uh, my professor um, and I have been also to Kenya and we've seen, seen how these women live. So in general, the place we've been in Kenya have very poor medical resources, but I saw that the men there uh, get treated before women when they're sick. So of course I didn't go during the pandemic, but we can see it in the hospitals there that the women, they play a very huge role in their homes. Uh, they have to take care of the children, but also of the entire house. And for them, um, feeding their family is more important than taking care of their own health. So what we want to do for these three groups is the same thing. What we want to do is to empower these women to understand the problems because I believe that the women from these three groups are very strong. They, the thing they try to do is that they would rather deny the issue and continue with their the daily tasks they have to do than to solve the problem. So this is what we want to do. We want to help them solve the problem and not just to oppress the problem. Um, so do you plan to expand your project to other indigenous communities in the future? Yes, of course, of course. So we're going to be starting on these three project sites to first see uh, how we're going to proceed because uh, it's a lot of work, of course, but we're very passionate about this issue. And uh, um, I have my mindset on several other indigenous groups. For example, um, indigenous people in Hawaii, 
uh, they believe that the volcanoes are uh, gods and they have this same spiritual belief kind of like the other indigenous groups and i also i found this really really interesting and i also want to help other uh women from the from uh areas in africa because um there are a lot of countries in africa i feel that the whole world isn't educated enough on the countries in africa and there are a lot of uh, tribes and indigenous groups there that get overlooked so we will be expanding our project. This is um, for sure. But we're going to be starting by just focusing on these three, see what we can do, and then expand to more. Our goal is, of course, to help the most people we are capable of. Uh, so what uh, what link do you have? do you make between global health and environmental governance? So I believe that global health and environmental governance are very closely related because, uh, first of all, the environmental governance, the people who make these decisions, they, of course, want the best for everyone. But sometimes um, they overlook a few communities and a few uh, ethnical groups. And they don't really think that everything they say or do will impact the society more than it impacts them. So this is the main issue we have. And uh, I believe that if we can get women to express their point of view and their opinions, it will help the overall environmental governance to make decision and the overall global health. Because for example, um, the ethnic group of the Eastern Himalayas, they have a great knowledge for traditional medicine, which is very different from our medicine. So their medicine is more based on plants and things like that. And not a lot of people know, but they have um, extraordinary knowledge and their traditional medicine works even better sometimes. They have used these herbs that can even heal a broken leg. So I believe that there are a lot of things that science and more advanced communities can learn from these more traditional communities to improve the global health. So how do we go about putting in place more culturally nuanced and gender strategies to health policy around the world? So this is something that we get asked a lot. So my main issue is that first of all, uh, everyone talks about gender equalities, but I think it, that both genders will never be equal until everyone believes that these three genders are equal. So what we first have to do is to, of course, spread awareness and to educate people more. So I'm still a high school student, and I noticed that in our education system, um, we lack of knowledge on smaller communities. We always talk about America or France or China, but we never talk about the smaller communities. And I believe that educating someone starts from their youngest age. So I want to say that um, myself, I would like to go to some schools to start with and to talk about these projects with people there for the young boys and young girls who would like to help and to participate in our project. And um, do you also work with men to raise awareness about these problems you mentioned? Yes, well, my two professors are men. Um, I, I have my professor in Luan, who is a professor in China and the leader of our other project, which is called Mian Simu Qihua Xing Dong, which is a environmental project a, and um, it's about climate change. And I also have another professor, Professor Zachary, who currently is working in our project site in Kenya. So we believe that we need the help from everyone, men or women, to improve our project. So we, we need all the help we can get. But the main thing is that we really want to empower women and to show women that they can do things on their own. Uh, so could you tell us where to access your research to go deeper in the subject? Um, I can leave you my email if you want, or you can leave me yours, and I will send you the link to our, um, pro uh, to our project. So... Uh, 
Um, you can also visit my virtual booth on the um, Paris Feast Forum website. Um, and there you have a lot of information about everything we do and as well as our other project. So I left my email if any one of you want to contact me because your help is very precious for us. Uh, we're not strong enough on ourselves. We need the help of everyone because this is a very big global project and we want to spread awareness and to help women from all communities in the world, in every continent of the world. And in order to expand this, we first have to do our, um, our job in these three project sites, see what works, that way we will be able to expand easier. Our goal is to help everyone, men and women, but right now we're focusing more on women because we believe that they're the ones who need more help for now but we are also helping people in general from indigenous groups. Uh, for example, in the um, indigenous group of the Eastern Himalayas, my professor and I are doing this project that helps with the climate change. And we're getting um, their younger generation to get more interested in climate change. We're doing a few um, nature photography competitions or small things like that. I believe that it can really impact a whole community when you get everyone interested. Uh, so do we have any other questions? Okay, so I would like to thank everyone for your participation and your time. If you have any question, um, don't uh, hesitate to email me or to go to my virtual booth and I hope everyone stays safe and have a great day. Thank you.